took out Our Lady to the time they took out the, the tabernacle to the time they took out stations, the time they took out all devotions, the time at this point they have changed our churches, they closed them. And now we're not even allowed in many, many areas to kneel when that awesome presence comes down into this one little host. Some lounge, some sit, some stand. I'm tired of enneagrams, I'm tired of your witchcraft, I'm tired. I'm tired of being pushed in corners, tired of your inclusive language that refuses to admit the Son of God is a man. I'm tired of your tricks. I'm tired of your deceit. I'm tired of you constantly just making a crack. And then the first thing you know, there's a hole, and all of us fall into it. This was deliberate. These were not a group of children decided to do this. This was a group that was told what to do and how to do it. You dare portray Jesus as a woman under the guise of mime. No, you made a statement that was not accidental. I am so tired of you liberal church in America. And everything you've ever done has bound in silence. Nothing, nothing you've done from your witchcraft to your enneagrams to your centering prayer to all this earth spirituality. There she is. She calls it out. The witchcraft, the uh, centering prayer, the uh, all this nonsense. She's calling it out. 1993. Replacing holy water with sand. I'm tired of it. We have swallowed enough of your idea of God. You have really no God. You have no dogma, no doctrine, and no authority. Because the only authority in the Catholic Church is our Holy Father and the Magisteri, and you have disclaimed that. You don't believe in the Eucharist. You don't believe in the Immaculate Conception. You don't believe in the Virgin Birth. You don't believe in Mary's power of intercession. You don't believe in religious life. You don't believe in being a spouse of Christ. You do believe in teaching to little children of the third grade sex education. You do believe in forcing centering prayer and forcing inclusive language upon us. And now she calls out 1993 forcing sex education on children. I mean, she's very prophetic here. 1993. And she says 30 years. Now we're over 50 years, folks. We're 20 years from this. You depict Jesus as a woman. You're sick, trying to destroy the Catholicity of the simple and the poor and the elderly by your ways. I'm not, I'm not going to accept that. I'm a Roman Catholic. I'm a Latin Rite. I believe in God as Father, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe that Jesus is His Son, His only Son. I believe that the Spirit proceeds from Father and Son, that there is a Trinity. I believe that baptism puts into my heart and soul that wondrous Trinity. It is not an initiation into a club. This is something we need to repeat over and over. People think baptism is initiation into a community club. It does enter you into the church, but more importantly, it remits original sin. And if you're an, old, an adult, mortal sin, venial sin, and gives you grace in your heart to be saved, to be justified is the language, uh, and regenerated. So again, this is why we don't delay baptism. This is why baptism is of the essence of Catholicism. I'm so glad she said that. I believe that he died and he suffered and he rose. He rose. It wasn't a, a rising of the resurrection of Jesus in the thoughts of men. It wasn't something that we have to remember. It was a physical resurrection. I believe in that. You don't. So in case you're just a good Catholic person who's never heard the crazy liberalism, and I'm going to come back to Mother in just a second, uh, liberals will tell you that Jesus, when he rose, what happens is he rose in our thoughts and he rose in our hearts. He didn't actually rise from a tomb. So you have to be careful. You might hear a liberal priest or a Protestant pastor say, well, yeah, I believe Jesus rose again, but they believe that he rose in our hearts, not that he rose from the dead. And Mother Angelica, of course, is aware of this heresy. She's calling it out. She's saying that's not what we believe as Catholics. We believe the body of Jesus that was dead, that was crucified, rose on the third day. And our children don't even know the Eucharist anymore. They don't understand that that is the blessed sacrament. That's the body and blood, soul and divinity of Jesus. Your catechisms are so watered down. They say nothing except love your neighbor. No, you've got to love God first. Love it. Love it. She says, this is 20 years ago. 
the kids don't know about the Blessed Sacrament. They don't know about the real presence. They don't know about the Eucharist. 20 years ago, your catechisms are full of love your navel. No, you got to love God first. You got to love God first. You got to live with God in your heart. You can't give what you don't possess. I don't like your church. You have nothing to offer. You do nothing but destroy. All that you've seen this week, my friends, is what the Catholic Church is really like. All those beautiful teenagers are what they all should be like. All of those, those ceremonies that you saw are so truly, wonderfully Catholic. But no, you want to destroy that. And so you plant this mind, a woman as Jesus. You dare do that. You can't stand Catholicity at this height. When I heard, heard her say that, you put that woman in as a mime. What would Mother Angelica think if she saw... Pachamama, an idol of Mother Earth in the Vatican in front of the Pope. God bless her that she was not alive to see that. We saw that. We live in 20 years beyond this point of things degrading. Have you spoiled so many things in these 30 years? I speak for myself and my community. We're not going to take your inclusive language. We're not going to stand or lounge. We're going to kneel before that wondrous Eucharist. We're not going to go for all those crazy things that you're pushing out as new and cultural and American. They're not American. America was built on God. America was built on trust in God. And you've made it pagan. You've helped to make this nation pagan. Because you have no, no spirituality that, that attracts. 1993, she knows the enemies of Christ want to make the church pagan. She, Mother Angelica is so based, based on Catholicism here. I just, it's amazing to me how insightful she was in 19, this is 1993 after the World Youth Day in Denver. All right, continuing. Your religious orders are going down. You don't have vocations and you don't even care. Your whole purpose is to destroy. Wow. And she goes on for, for more here. I'm not going to take that anymore. I'm not going to take that anymore. And you know, my own life as a Roman Catholic, I tried to, you know, say, well, when Pope Francis said that, what he really meant was this. And well, if you look in the Spanish and you choose the fourth definition in the Spanish dictionary, it's not heretical and well, you know, I mean, you know, I know that the liturgy is comical and it's embarrassing and they drop hosts on the floor, but, you know, the mass is still valid, so what are we going to do? No, it's time that Christ receives his rights. His rights as the king of kings. The nobility that he has as the eternal son of the father, as our redeemer, but also as our Redeemer in the womb and our Blessed Mother, bringing her dignity to her and his dignity in the Blessed Sacrament. So no, I'm not going to turn around anymore when hosts are dropped or particles are lost or chalices are spilled or non-Catholics are brought to communion when they don't know what they're doing. And this whole thing started with Mother Angelica because a woman depicted Christ in the Stations of the Cross in 1993 at the Denver World Youth Day. Now, back to Pope Francis. And here's where we get back to the gaslighting because although Mother Angelica doesn't use the word gaslighting, she says, I'm tired of it. I'm tired of y'all putting us down, hiding the goodness that we are trying to do through Christ Jesus. You are bringing in your magic, your occult, your anagrams, your centering prayer, your sex ed for children. She names all of these things. And she says, y'all have nothing, nothing that attracts, she says. You see, heresy is sterile. It's dry. It doesn't have life. This is why in the history of the church, when heresy comes out of the church, it has popularity for a time, but then it begins to shrivel. It withers away. 